I'm F. Welcome to today's class. We'll get started pretty soon. And it's Sunday, I'm feeling lazy. So, of course, the sloth is visible. But yeah, so I'm going to give you a few minutes and then we'll get started. And since we're talking about sloths, why not shout out? Set some reps. As well as a quick shout out for Moosa Boat. Hopefully at t does not turn into a sloth today. Just saying. at t please don't mess up. Alright, now I feel real silly right now talking to you guys with a sloth image on screen, so... Yeah, I think I'll go ahead and remove this slothful image in a second. So you guys know I'm actually am here, and I just messing around. And actually, the light just went up, so I'll probably keep this goofy image of a slop on the screen for a minute. <laughs> and yes, you see a slop and shout out to both Musubu and Sets and Rep. Just saying. All right, at three thirty on the dot, I'm gonna go ahead, turn the camera on, and I'll go ahead and get started. And I'm actually am set up, ready to go. Just like this would be funny to have the soft image on the camera. And the promo actually am here and I just record it. Let's go ahead and remove the sloth. Yeah, go ahead and get the sloth off the screen. See? Told you. <laughs> Third throw on the dot as promised. So I remove the socks. So this is more legitimate for a yoga class. And we can get started. And actually, now that I'm noticing, camera should come up a little bit. So I apologize for that. In advance, camera's got low. Now it's too high. Like three bears. Bring it down a scotch. There we go. Who's gonna show up? <sighs> we just get to swap the board a second ago, so I think now it's time to go ahead and start with the class. Have some house music playing. So don't be super awkward. <laughs> Okay, let's start this afternoon's class. Come on, on your backs. You may want to grab a couple blocks and we can go ahead and get started. So, whenever you're ready, come laying down to your mats. Hands go on the side. Just relax, 
Take a deep breath through the nose and out through the mouth. Deep breath in and out. One more time, breath in and out. If you have not done so yet, now would be the perfect time to set attention for today's class. It's going to the breath going in and out to the body. You may also place one hand on the heart and one on the belly. And pay attention as the breath goes in, up the nose, the chest, the throat, and out the mouth. This time again, through the nose, down through the throat, chest, and the belly. And now opposite direction, belly, chest, throat, and this time nostril, still on the mouth. Inhale, and exhale. As you feel this air and energy going from the bottom of your body up to the top, just do a quick body scan to see how you're feeling today. You may have a lot of energy, a little bit of energy. It's also just a change as you're breathing through this meditation and through this yoga class and this practice. Just remember, as you breathe here and relax, that this is yoga practice, not yoga perfect. So if you stumble or fall, it's perfectly okay. And while we're trying to go for sensation, we're not trying to go for pain. So if something does not feel right, feel free to back off. If it does not feel safe, feel free to back off. But for now, just relax. Let the air go in and out of your body. close to your glutes, knees come upward, and rest your hands to the side, and actually, at this point, bring your arms out to a T, or the cactus shape, scoot your hips towards the left, and let the knees come over to the right, if you have a space, you can also let your gaze go over to the left, if you don't have a space, don't worry about it. And just stick with a gaze where it's best for you at this time. Just relax and concentrate on the breath. Okay, whenever you're ready, bring your knees back to center. You may want to squeeze your hips over to the right. And now gently let your knees fall over to the left. If you've got a space, you can actually send your gaze towards the right. Or you can keep it towards the left, whatever feels best for your body at this point in time. And just relax into the pose. Two more breaths. Okay, whenever you're ready, 
come back to center. You may even want to like move your knees from side to side. At this point, you can bring your left ankle right above your right above your right thigh. So right above your right knee. And kind of open up your left thigh up a little bit to get right to the hip flexor on the left. You know, just gently, not too much. So you want to feel sensation once again, but you don't want to overstretch anything. In that space, you may even want to bring up your right leg and even place your arms, hands beneath the right thigh. And that suits your body. Or you can keep your foot planted as you relax to this pose. Now we go ahead and open up the hips and everything before we get started. Okay, whenever you're ready, bring the left foot down to meet the right. Bring up the right foot, right above the left knee. And you can do the same thing on this side as well. And of course, you can gently push down to the leg that suits your body. You can even raise this leg and put your hands underneath it, or you can keep your foot planted. Whatever works best for you. Breathe in through the nose and out through the nose and ease into this posture. Okay, now bring the right foot down to meet the left. You may want to winch to wipe your knees from side to side. And whenever you're ready, kind of roll up to your favorite side. And usually just strengthen your arms, come up. And now come to all fours. And actually shift the hips backwards towards your feet. Knees coming out wide. Hands go stretch out far in front of you for a child's pose. You may even want to put your fingertips onto the mat to really stretch out the shoulders. A nice good stretch in the shoulder ground for when you really can start to build height. And breathe. Child's pose to your gaze up in front of you while keeping your elbow, everything from your elbow to your wrist plant to the mat. Now shift the weight of your body upwards and forward a little bit to a semi table slash plank. Now send your legs behind you, gaze goes up forward in front. Also bring your elbows in close together. Only like you're doing a close grip push up. Gaze goes straight ahead for Sphinx pose. Get away to get some blood flow going within the shoulders as well as the upper back, as well as open up everything else. And breathe. If it's in your practice, you may even want to. Extend your fingers out in front and pull your body up, but if it's too much in your lower back, remain in a standard sphinx pose. Once again, you want to feel sensation, but at the same time, honor the body. Stay 
exchange stuff for a couple more brass. And whenever you're ready, shift your hips backwards from space into your child's pose. And breathe. And remember, if you've ever become too tired or worn out throughout the class, child's pose is always an option. The most important part about this practice is to pretty much build the breath and relax the mind. And of course, first and foremost, breathe. Okay, when you're ready, come up to all fours. Make sure your wrist, elbow, and shoulder are lined up, as well as your hip and your knees for a stable table pose. Take a deep breath in. Let the belly drop. Exhale. For a cat. Inhale. As you're opening up a jar of mayonnaise. Exhale. As if you're closing it. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, let the belly drop. Exhale, round the back into cat. Inhale, for a cow. Exhale, for a cat. Do three more on the measure of your breath. stable table and now extend your left leg out behind you and as you're trying to kick the wall behind you with your left foot and move forward a little bit and you're trying to kick the wall in front of you behind you with your left foot extend your right arm in front of you and have the thumb facing up you're going to stick somebody's hand and breathe for this first final bounce for the day sides. So now the right foot is kicking the wall behind you and the left hand is extended. We're actually about to shake someone's hand with your left and breathe. Send the right arm again. Left leg goes out again. This time, knee to elbow. So take a deep breath in. Exhale. Knee to elbow. Inhale. Extend. Exhale. Knee to elbow. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And try to keep a flat back the entire time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And exhale. Place both feet down, both knees down to meet each other. Now extend the right leg out. Left arm up. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Knee to elbow. Inhale. Extend. Exhale. Crunch it in. Inhale. Extend. Exhale. Bring it in. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, 
and exhale. Come to all fours. Do rise of cat cow. Now make sure you have a little extra space to your sides. So once again, bring the right arm up. The left leg comes up. And you have the space. Bring your right arm out next to you. And the left leg out to the side as well. And breathe. If it's going too much, you can always come and bring everything back to the center. But just try it if it doesn't hurt. Okay, bring it back to center. Release. Now get ready to do the opposite side. So, right leg, left arm, extend, and extend. And try to keep your hips as square as humanly possible. You're trying to challenge the body and not snap anything up. And breathe. Alright, bring it back to center. And release it. Cat cow. To reset everything. set of crunches so right arm comes up left leg comes up knee to elbow sides. Inhale and exhale. You're building heat for you to stand up today. Alright. I'm going to do the side outs one more time. So, right arm comes out. Left leg comes up. And extend to the side. One more time. And make sure you keep your body squared off and centered. And breathe. center and release. Switch sides. Right leg, left arm, extend and extend. And breathe. Center. Cat cow. And going to child's pose real quick. While we're still warming up. Your body should feel a little bit warmer than it did at the beginning of class at this point. I also take this time to reevaluate and re you know think about your attention for today's class and let go of any type of extra thoughts that are in your head this morning. Whenever you're ready, 
Come back to the table, and from the table, come up to stand it. <laughs> Hey, sets and reps, thanks for the shout out. And the raise, sir. Appreciate it, appreciate it. <laughs> hey, Hanuman, aka Goku, Journey to the West. And of course, boss are up and running, so you already know. Quick shout out to Sess and Reps. Uh. Alright, so guys, we're going to talk to Matt. Take a deep breath in. Excel with straight legs. Alright, let's go overhead. And if you feel it, grab your right wrist to your left hand and peel yourself. Over to the right. Come back to center and switch sides. You want to go ahead and stretch out the side bodies as we warm up the hips and the shoulders. One more side on each side. Yes, sir. It's slop time. Well, already did a sloppiness. Now we're going to do a little bit of more beastly stuff since we're going to do our vinyasa. So, at this point, come back to all fours and shift your hips back behind you for a downward facing dog. What's being the first downward dog of the day? It may be a little tense. You may even want to walk your dog, put on your feet left and right. Maybe try to touch the mat or the floor with your heels. Keep your gaze in front of you. Shake your head yes and no. Release what attention you may have in your neck. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Step, jump, float to the bottom, to the top of your mat. Inhale. Halfway up. Exhale. Four full hitch from the hips. Inhale again. Arms go overhead. Exhale. Hands to heart center. From on pose. Deep breath in again, arms overhead, exhale, forward, forward, straight legs, exhale, halfway up, jump, step, or float to a plank, shut the rugged down, close push up, elbows close to your body, from here come up to an up dog, or hands close to your chest, keep yourself up part way for cobra, and from cobra or up dog, come into a dark facing dog. Go to the sun and a couple more times. So once again, gaze goes in front. Walk, step, hop, or float in front of you. Cup halfway. Deep into the forward fold. Come all the way up. Hands over head. Hands to heart center. Forward fold. Halfway up. Jump, step, or float to a plank or a scissor plank. Shoulder rugged down. To up dog or carver pose. Where your elbows are close to your body, chest is coming up forward. And from here, to a child's pose or to a dark facing dog. And of course, you can throw your feet out one more time as we're going to the last sun A before we go into our first flow. So once again, gaze goes in front, comes up your mat, halfway up, deep in the fourth fold, hands over head. Hands to heart center. Plank. Try to work it down. Up dog or cobra. And then finally, downward facing dog. And from here, rest in the child's pose for a few breaths. And once again, it's a good time to think about your things for today's class and clear the mind. And also, give time and place to reconnect with the breath.
Yeah, you're at the vinyasa part of the blend class. The yin class, the yin, more gentle part of the class is going to come at the end as well. So I do it kind of a little bit of gen, sorry, yin slash gentle yoga at the beginning, then I do the vinyasa in the middle, and then the gentle yin portion again at the very end. So you're right in the meat and potatoes of the fast vinyasa portion. So with that being said, come out of, oh, sorry, come out of child's pose into vinyasa and into your downward facing dog. And from your downward facing dog, take your right leg up. Gaze goes in between, sorry, gaze goes between your two hands. Shift your foot in between both hands. Plant the left foot down. Have it coming up on 45 degrees. You may even want to put your hands towards your hips. Make sure your hips are squared off. Hands to heart center or hands over head for warrior one. Extend the left foot out a little bit more to 90 degrees. Arms come out to a T. Gaze goes in front of you for warrior two. For warrior two, you can now bring your elbow close to your knee for a side angle pose. From side angle, we can now go back to a warrior two. From warrior two, let the left hand come down towards the left thigh. Gaze goes towards the left hand, right hand for reverse warrior. Reverse warrior. Back to your warrior two. Straightenish the right leg. Come down the right for a triangle pose. And from triangle pose, you may want to have a block near you. Shift the weight into your right foot. Hand goes from to the mat to the floor for a half moon pose. From half moon, gaze goes to your hand and now towards the floor. Bring your left hand down to meet the right. You may even have blocks in front of you. They extend your arms from Google Gadget Arms for standing splits. You should really be feeling this in your right hamstring. Give way to straight to apart. Give way to strengthen and of course stretch out the hamstring. Okay, come out of this pose to a lunge position. Shift the right leg out to meet the sorry right leg out to meet the left. Shut the bird down. Up dog or cobra. Back in the dog facing dog and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. So now left leg comes up, send it in through the hands. Right leg pivots to 45 degrees. Come to your warrior one. Hands heart center overhead. Extend out to your warrior two. Warrior two goes to your side angle pose. Side angle now goes to warrior one. To your reverse warrior. To your warrior two. Straighten the left leg. Let the left arm go down the left leg. Gaze goes up to the right hand. Open up the side body. Now you can bring the gaze down to your left foot. Weight goes into the left foot. Left hand comes down to half moon on the opposite side. And breathe. We now go from half moon to a standing split. And once again, this is a good opportunity to really feel your hamstrings. And you also want to make sure you have a slight bend into the knee and don't go 100% straight. And keep your back flat at all times. Breathe in. Come down to that lunge position. Shift the left foot back behind you. Come up to your plank. Shut the rugged down. Up dog or cobra. And then down facing dog. And of course, with these planks, you can always do this on your knees. And instead of up, up, sorry, upper facing dog, you can always do cobra. We're gonna stay in down dog for a few more breaths before moving on. All right. So once again, right leg comes up, send it to your hands. Warrior one, whichever variation works best for your body. And from warrior one to warrior two. Side angle pose. If the body's in your practice, you can go for it now. From side angle to your warrior two, warrior two, reverse your warrior, back down to warrior two, straighten out the right leg, come down to the triangle pose. You may have a block near your hand if it feels, I mean, if it suits your body better as you open up the side body. 
Gaze goes to the light to our left hand. Now, gaze goes down to the floor. Weight goes into the right foot. Plant the right hand. Gaze now goes to the left hand as you go into half moon. And with half moon, if the bind is in your practice, you can go for it now or you can stay here for a few breaths. Now from half moon, we're gonna close off this circle and go into standing splits. And now for a little more heat, you can bring your hands to heart center for airplane pose, AKA warrior three. And for some of you guys in the fitness industry, yes, this is basically like doing a static Romanian deadlift. And you may want to keep that in mind before we go forward. All right, from this pose, now bring yourself back to a lunge position. Shift the right foot back behind you. Come to a plank. Shut the burger down. Up dog and cobra. Down facing dog. And we do the same thing on the opposite side. So left leg comes up. Sit it through. Come up to your warrior one. Exhale to your warrior two. Elbow comes down. Extend the side angle pose. Go for the bind if it's in your practice. Gaze goes in front of you towards your fingertips. Come back up for your warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Back to warrior two. Straighten the right leg. Come down to the triangle pose. Gaze goes to the right hand. Shift the weight into the right foot. Extend your body forward into half moon. And once again, if it's in your practice, you can go for the bind. From half moon, close up the hips. To a standing split. If it's in your practice, come up to that warrior three. Also known as a static RDL. From here, bring your body back down to a lunge position. Shift your weight forward to a plank. Shut it right down. Up dog cobra. And down facing dog. Yep. Exactly the beastly part of the class. Alright, so now. As we're in down, our facing dog. Begin again. So, right leg comes up. Set it through your hands. Turn the left foot down. 45 degrees for your warrior one. Extend out for your warrior two. Come down to the side angle. If it's in your practice, you'll wrap the left hand beneath your legs. Send in the right arm to meet it. Bring your hands together. It should be gaze upwards towards the ceiling. And from here, release the bind if you have it. Back to warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Back to warrior two. Strain the right leg. Come down to a triangle pose. From triangle pose, see your gaze forward in front of you. Now we come up. It's a half moon. If it's in your practice, you can kind of bend your left knee in towards you, send the left arm behind you, grab for the go for the foot, and now we have bounded half moon pose. If this feels good, go for it. If not, don't worry about it and do it about the bind. Again, you go over your left shoulder as you open up the left side of the body and breathe. If a pose ever becomes too intense where you can't breathe properly, you probably shouldn't be doing this. All right? Let it release the bind. Bring both hands down. We are standing splits. Option to come up to your warrior three. And yeah, that's too easy. We can now do three body weight RDLs. Before coming down to a lunge, and from here to a plank, shuttle work it down, up dog or cobra, and the dog facing dog. And of course, versus the RDLs, if you're really, really experienced, you can go and do some handstand hops, but my shoulders and hips aren't trying to do it, so I'm not trying to set myself up trying to do it, but some people can. <laughs> Just saying. 
All right, we begin again opposite side. So left leg comes up, send it to the hands, come up to your warrior two, and set out to our warrior one, now to a warrior two. Side angle pose, and once again this time, you wrap the right arm behind you, wrap right your legs, have both hands meet each other, gaze goes up over your right shoulder, and breathe. And once again, if it goes too much, you can always release the bind. Stay with every variation of this pose for two more breaths. Okay, release it. Back into warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Warrior two again. Straighten up the left leg. Come down to your triangle pose. Place the weight into the left foot. Now gently come to half moon pose. Hopefully you don't have the mat error that I did. At this point, you may want to bring your right knee in towards your body. Grab the right foot with your right hand. Take a deep breath in, exhale. Over the right side of the body for a half moon. And this hole becomes too much, you can always release it. If not, then you can stay in bind at half moon. And breathe. We're going to save three more breaths. Okay, release your bind. Come to that standing split. You have a standing split. You may now come to your warrior three. Do your body weight RDLs or handstand hops. That works best for your body. And from there, come back to your lunge. Shift the left leg back behind you. Come to your plank. Try to work it down. Up dog or cobra. And then in the down facing dog. We're gonna do this one more time. So let's go. Right leg comes up, send it through your hands. Warrior one to warrior two. Side angle pose for a few breaths. Outside angle to your warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Warrior two again. To your triangle pose. Now from triangle, weight goes to the right foot. Be ready to tap the floor with your right hand. Gaze goes to the left arm. And of course, if any of your practice and it felt good, go for the bind. Gaze goes over the left shoulder. And breathe. And of course, when you use more balancing like poses, a wall is always an option. Okay, release the bind, close it up with standing splits, or to your warrior three, RDLs, or your handstand hops, whichever works best for your body. Now back down to a lunge, take the right leg behind you to a plank, shuttle working down, up dog or cobra, back into a dog facing dog. Left leg comes up, sit down through your hands. Warrior one, extend it out to warrior two. Side angle pose. Go for the bind for a few breaths if it's in your practice. And breathe. From side angle pose, back out to your warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Back into your warrior two. Straighten the left leg to your triangle pose. Shift the weight to your left foot. Come forward in your mat to half moon pose. Bring the knee in towards your body and extend out for binding half moon or just half moon, depending how you feel at this point. Okay, at this point, we're going to close up the circle, back, and two, standing splits, or warrior three, to RDLs, or even handstand hops. 
do what works best for your body. And your edge may be different than anyone else's, that's okay. And once again, this is yoga, per this is yoga practice, not yoga perfect. Come back down to that lunge. Shift the left foot back behind you. Check it right down. Up dog or cobra. Down facing dog. And now chill out in the child's pose and rest for a few breaths. And once again, as you reset in the child's pose, it's a good time to kind of reconnect with your breath and your body and just chill. And think about the attention you may have and relax. Okay, whenever you're ready, we're gonna come out of child's pose and do one more flow. So at this point, come up to your downward facing dog. Bring your left, right leg up behind you for a three-legged dog with the right leg extended. Bring it through both hands this time. We're just gonna do a crescent lunge. So now, come up to a lunge on the right leg. Arms go up in front of you for a crescent lunge. And from here, shift the weight into your right foot. Bring the left leg in front of you as well. For marionette pose, you may even want to extend the left leg in front of you. Bring it back at this point. Bring it down to your side. Hands come to heart center for hovering tree pose. And it helps yeah, so if you're not looking at, if you're looking at something in front of you that is not moving, because the minute something is bouncing in front of you, you're going to lose your balance. All right? Straighten the left leg out. Bring the right, bring your arms back up. Mindfully bring your left leg back. That crescent lunge position. Bring your hands down beside you. Let the left knee come down to the mat. Right arm goes up to twisted lunge. Now, shift your right leg behind you to support the side plank and turn the left leg accordingly. And now your gaze should be going towards your right hand from the side plank. Now bring both hands down to meet each other parallel on the mat. Kind of a table pose to a plank. Shoulder bring it down. Up dog or cobra. And a down facing dog and repeat it on the opposite side. So now, left leg comes up, send it in through your hands, come up to that crescent lunge, bring the right leg up with you, and extend it if it feels good, or you can keep the knee bent, depending on what's works best for your body. Bend the knee again, and come into that hovering tree pose. You can either have hands to heart center, or bring your hands overhead, whichever works best for you. And from the southern tree pose, we now shift the weight back into the left foot. As we get ready to come back into that lunge mindfully, hands go overhead. Now we bring the hands down to the mat, knee to the mat, right palm goes forward to the mat, left arm goes up for a crescent lunge, sorry, twisted lunge. And from this twisted lunge, we can now Rotate the legs out a little bit. So your right knee is facing this direction. Left leg comes out to a assisted side plank. And from the side plank, we now come up to a regular plank. Shoulder bring it down, up dog or cobra, and the down facing dog. And we get ready to repeat this two more times, add on to each layer. All right, so from downward facing dog, right leg comes up, send it through the hands, press it warrior, to your marionette pose, to the tree position, and if you're really feeling it, you can actually bring your left foot right above your right knee, crisscross a little bit, and now sink down into a chair pose, or we like to call it gentleman's pose. So basically, you're doing a hip stretch, and squat at the same time. And breathe. If it ever becomes too much, you can always go back to the hovering tree pose we did earlier. 
or if you have it available, you can also grab a spin trainer, buy the handles, and use that to get deep into those poles, whichever is best for your body. And once again, it's yoga practice, not yoga perfect. And breathe. Okay, from here, bring yourself up a little bit. Now come back into that lunge. You can come down to your knee or keep the lunge hovering. Bring the left palm down to this side lunge, or a twisted lunge. If and twisted lunge, we can now come up to a assisted plank or a full plank. Right arm goes overhead. From here, bring both hands down to the mat. Shoulder bring it down, up dog or cobra, into dog facing dog. And repeat the same thing on the opposite leg. So left leg comes up, sit in the hands, come up to that crescent lunge. Crescent lunge, go to your marionette pose. Marionette, now goes to the tree pose. Head into your practice. Tree pose now goes into your gentleman's pose. Sink down here for a few breaths. And once again, try to concentrate on something in your room that's not moving or outside that's not moving. Okay, come back out of marionette pose. And now mindfully come back into that crescent lunge. Right hand comes down to the mat. Do your twisted lunge. Get yourself ready for the side plank. Left hand goes overhead. Get yourself down to your mat. Back down to a plank, shoulder bracket down, up dog or cobra, and back into a down facing dog. There's a few more brush, you got this one more time. And then I'm gonna go a little bit easier on you guys. Alright, right leg comes up, send through your hands, press the lunge, marry that pose to tree. Gemma's pose. Back up a little bit to the crescent lunge. Left hand goes down. Twist the lunge. Now move on. Side plank. You may even want to bring your left foot to your left right calf. Sorry, your right foot to your left calf. Put a little bit of a hip opener as you're in the side lunge. And from here, back down to your plank. Shoulder rugged down, up dog or cobra, then in the down facing dog. Right away, left leg comes up, sit in through your hands, crescent lunge, crescent lunge, now go to your marionette pose, whichever variation works best for you, to that tree pose, and from tree down into the gymnast pose. Gentle pose, and now come down to that crescent lunge, twisted lunge, and then side plank on the opposite side. And from here, we go up to the plank, shoulder rugged down, up dog or cobra, down facing dog, and from down facing dog, child's pose. And breathe. This is also, once again, a good time for you to catch your breath, reconnect the breath with the body, as well as breath with the movement, as well as your intention, and relax. And that's one of the things about yoga, going through challenges and poses while staying calm. It's like we all got to go through challenging situations out there in the world and staying calm, especially nowadays with this pandemic. All right. And whenever you're ready... Come out of child's pose, maybe seated. At this point, we're gonna do a little bit of core work, but we'll make sure you guys set up properly. So, I want you to pretty much put your hands to your shins. Right hand goes underneath the left thigh, bring up the right leg, and try to engage your core. Make sure you can feel your core being engaged. Bring that foot down, switch sides, left foot comes up. And engage the core. Now, bring both feet up. Make sure you feel the core being engaged. 
and remember the sensation. If it ever comes too much, or you feel like it's dumping to your low back, go for the thighs at any time. Okay, let both legs go down. All right, now we're about to go right into this variation of boat. So now, come out to a boat pose. You can either be able to lay standing on the floor or in front of you, whichever is best for you. And breathe. Sign, come to your boat, take a deep breath in, exhale, let your arms go to the right, knees come to the left, inhale, sorry, exhale, back to center, out to the side, inhale, out to the side, exhale, back to center. It doesn't ever go too much, just stick to a standard bolt and hold it. Otherwise, keep doing this. And if your abs aren't burning, you're not doing it. Back to center, bring your feet down, and rest. Uh, do this Russian twist for one more set. All right. Set the stuff off for your boat. Bring the feet in front of you or stay here and go side to side or extend your feet. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Breathe in to the side. Inhale. Exhale to the center. Inhale to the side. Exhale. Center. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Center, bring it back down, shake out your legs, and relax. All right, now lay firm to your mat, sorry, lay down on your back, but uh, we're not done yet. Bring your feet in close, be your feet in close towards your glutes, take a deep breath in, exhale, set yourself up for a bridge, keep your back, your back flat at all times, you can feel this in your glutes. Elevate your hamstrings, but not in your lower back. I repeat, you should feel this in your glutes and hammies, but not your lower back. And just relax and breathe. Stay here for a few more breaths. Again, if that was too easy, you can now extend your left foot right in front of you. Keep the weight into your right foot. Take a deep breath in, exhale. Hover bridge on the right side and hold. Release 
make sure you walk first from left to right. Alright, come back up to seat it. And then hop up about to do some burpees. Just kidding. Alright. No burpees today. We're on cool down mode right now, so remove a little flesh from your sit bones. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, four fold over straight legs. Make sure you hinge from your hips and not from your back. yourself up. At this point, take your right foot, right over your, sorry, your left foot, right over your right leg. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Hook your right elbow right over your left knee and twist with the gaze going over the left shoulder and breathe. Exhale, four fold over the right leg, Janice Sasana. And as we practice, you may bind the right foot with the right hand and send the left arm overhead and bend your way open like so. Or you just keep it like this, whichever is best for your body. And breathe. Release the bind. Shake off both legs. This time, take the right foot right over the left leg. Square out the hips. Take the left elbow right against the right beneath the right knee. Make sure you don't have bone against bone, but kind of like try some against quadricep. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, gaze goes over the right shoulder. And as you're breathing in, you may be able to get deep into the twist. And once again, remember we're going for sensation and not pain. And breathe. towards the left thigh and let gravity bring the right knee down. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, forward fold over the left leg, but you're to the on the left. And once again, as your practice, you may even want to bind the left foot with your right hand. Sorry, your left foot with your left hand. 
Don't know why I'm getting them mixed up today. Right arm goes up overhead and open up the side body. If it's going to too much, you can just go for regular Johnny Sasana or a forward fold. Whatever you do is make sure it's right for your body and breathe. So you can see today I can't even go to the full extension. So I'm actually going to stop and just go to a standard forward fold. In other words, honor the body. that you're in. At this time, bring both feet together. You may want to place your hands underneath your feet. If it feels good for your body, take a deep breath in. Exhale, forward fold into this cobbler stretch. point, come lying onto your back. And one final time, bring your feet in towards your glutes. This time we're going to more relaxing, so bring your left foot now, so that your left ankle is right beneath your right knee, but not touching it. And once again, you may want to put a slight little bit of pressure into the left thigh to open up the left hip. Or just keep it as is, and you may even want to rise the right foot off the mat and put your hands underneath the right thigh if you can keep your back flat, or you just may want to keep it standard and just breathe and get a decent stretch in. And once again, we're going for sensation and not pain. And as mentioned many times throughout this practice, this is a practice, not perfection. sides. Bring the right foot down to meet the left. You may want to windshield wipe the legs from left to right. At this point, scoot your hips over to the left and let your knees fall over to the right. Gaze goes over the left shoulder and you may feel a little bit more open than you did to begin the class. And breathe. And once again, this is too much for your neck. You can always keep your gaze to the right. But if you have, if you have a space, go for the left. Stay here for about eight more breaths. Okay, we're 
come back to center, shift your hips over to the right, shift your knees over to the left, and then seeing your practice, you have space, gaze canal, go over the right shoulder, and breathe, and rest. Okay, whenever you're ready, bring yourself back to center. When you walk your legs from right to left, and extend your left foot down to the left corner of your mat, and your right foot to meet it. And do the same thing with your hands. Bring your hands down to the side. You may want to squinch your face, scrunch your teeth, sorry, your fists, your feet, and everything else. Tighten up everything like a ball and just let it go. Take a deep breath into the nose and out to the mouth. Deep breath in. Exhale. Turn on to your regular breathing. Inhale. And exhale. Nothing left to do. Nowhere else to go. Fire relaxation pose. Savasana. I'll let you rest here for a few minutes. We're going to see the meditation. Start to bring awareness back into the body. You may want to wiggle your hands, your feet. Shift the head from side to side. Wiggle yourself from yes to no. And whenever you're ready, shift your way forward to the very side of your body. Into a fetal position, onto the side. 
Press your hands possibly into your palms or into your forearms, whatever feels best for your body. And from here, using the strength of your arms, bring yourself back up to seated in front of your mat. Take a deep breath in. Hands go overhead. Exhale. Hands to heart center and towards the chest. It is a great honor to practice with each and every one of you here virtually, as well as physically, hopefully in the near future. Until next time, go forth in peace. Namaste. How's everybody feel? Yeah, Sluggy, that's the thing. I did that vinyasa. It will trip you up. <laughs> this is a FYI. Hey, Yoga with Jen, how you doing this afternoon? How you doing? Thank you so much for stopping by. So does anyone have any questions or comments to make? Otherwise, I think we're about to go ahead and raid Elephant. I'm doing good. Hey, no problem, no problem. Understandable. And greatly appreciate it. Doing very well. No problem. Thank you for stopping by. Get my phone, doesn't want to bring stuff up, so I'm going to use my browser who is online. Thanks. Um, it depends. I will say that with anything else, it's like with yoga, it's like we're saying your best bet is pretty much go for sensation but not pain. So if you feel being stretched out, you're good, but if something doesn't feel the right way, like you're about to snap something, stop. So in other words, you should not feel you feeling any type of joint, tendon, or ligament pain. You just feel the muscle being stretched by itself. So it all depends. Cause what they are stretching in class was is it between pain and sensation. If you feel pain of any type, stop immediately. Okay, now my phone finally refreshes now that the browser is up. So, let's see what we're going to raid. It happens when you try something new. Yep, exactly. That's the body's reaction. That's the thing when you try something different. It acts weird and like you just feel something just not feel right. But if it's one of those where it's like, okay, this doesn't feel right for real, real, stop. And you know what? Since she's just now getting over COVID, let's go ahead and raid our buddy Mike Fit. Anyway, thank you guys for showing up. And until next time, peace.